Hey, what's up guys? It's Leeton here from the Online Code Coach and it's been a long time since we made a video and in this video, we're gonna be making a tycoon here in Roblox. We're gonna show you how to do the code, how everything works. There's a series, this is the first video in this series. We're gonna go take our time and release um, about a five to 10 minute video each time. And I'm joined here by my co-host, Cruz. Hello. Yep. And Cruz will be our idea man behind all this tycoon making uh, videos. And I'll be your coder. And hopefully you, me, and Cruz will be learning something. So stay tuned. Let's get it. As you can see here, we are starting off in a brand new, brand spanking new, you gotta spank the new version, um, new game. <laughs> don't spank anybody, please. Um, don't, don't do that. We're gonna be in here in uh, the base plate. We also got the classic base plate, which, uh, whichever one of these, or even the flat terrain. Uh, this won't really matter. It's really gonna be up to you of what you want. Um, base plate. Yeah. So, I'm just gonna do the base plate because I feel like I might create my um, like layout, my uh, you know my world and my environment. I'll create that manually later. And by default, this is what you have if you've never used Roblox Studio before. Let me just move myself out the way a little bit here. Shove myself in the corner. There you go. Um, what you have here is the Explorer directory of everything that is basically set up for the project. Um, right here is the objects that you can insert. This, a lot of times this is not really there, so it can be closed. If you really wanna reopen that, you go here into view, and you will see it, it's right here. Okay, so this is that. Um, you have other stuff here that you can use. Uh, if you don't see a lot of these windows, they are up here. So these ones that, are, that I have checked that are grayed out, if you look at them right now real closely, those are the ones that I do have on my screen. So properties down here, this one is very important, which is this. If I just check that, you can see it disappears, it comes back. Explorer, come and go. All right, let's begin with our tycoon. Cruz, you mentioned the first thing we're gonna need it in our tycoon is? That when you load into the game, we're gonna start off with a little bit of currency, and game currency, let's just say 500. All right, so you can see I press play in here to test the game and I log in. Yeah, this is my little avatar. It shows my name up here, but I don't have any currency. So that is what today's video is all about. Logging in, first thing is currency. So we're going to start off by giving our player some in-game currency upon entering the game. Now, in the next video, I'm going to show you how we can work with that currency to make sure that the player is not like, if he spend money and he logs out and log back in, he doesn't start back again with, you know, the reset default amount. We don't want that. Okay, so first thing you're gonna understand is these folders are what control the game. And this is the starter player uh, folder. It has a drop down. We're gonna go inside there and then we're gonna go into the starter player script. So when the game start, when the player per se enters the game um, we can have something happen here so by clicking on the little plus button here I'm gonna tell it to create a script and this script will fire off when the player enters the game notice the script is called local script and the name is right here in the properties if you want to change the name of the script you can I'm gonna change the name to start in start in money started money and then I just press enter and you see the script name is now started money yes by default it says hello world print hello world and that's why I have this output down here on uh, basically I want to see these prints so when I click play you will see hello world right here again to turn on that output go to view 
you find it here. Cool. But we didn't have any currency there, so let's start with the coding. Hopefully you understand the coding, but I'll zoom in here so we make sure we see it properly. And let's begin. We're going to create a first variable. Now, first variable is going to represent, represent us as the player. Type the word local. This name, I'm just going to call it underscore player. It's going to represent us. So we just created a variable called underscore player. And now we're setting it to equal what? If you're listening, the what is us because it's supposed to represent yes. us. It is the local player. So the way you tell it that is you say um, all these folders are in your game. And in the game, there's a folder called players. So I'm going to say game dot players, just like it's spelled here. And when you play, you are the local player. So game dot players dot local player is me. All right. Once I've established that, I want to create another variable that represents how much I want him to start with. I'm going to call this underscore start money. And I'll set it to equal. How much did we say, buddy? Uh, 500. Five whopping hundred. All right. So now we have two variables. One that represents your player and one that represents a number. If you've ever been in school and someone asks you what's X plus three, well, X would be a variable that represents some sort of number like maybe five. X represents two. And then it's saying X plus three is actually five because that's just saying two plus five. So in case you're not too familiar with variables, these are variables. And the equal symbol simply means they represent the following thing that is typed on the other side. This is how you can tell the computer what to do and give it tasks. And so now with some more code that will use these two variables to say, hey, give this player this amount of money. First thing to understand is the player will show up here in this folder. Let me hit play so you can see this real quick. Once the game loads in, this folder now has me. So I show up in this folder and then I came with some other folders. So all your players will show up in your players folder. And local player simply means specifically you. Next, we're going to create a variable that will represent um, the player in that folder in a sense. So I'm going to say local and here I'm going to type, um, I'll just call it underscore folder. And I want this to represent the folder with the, the player's folder in a sense. So I'm going to say this equal, guess what? Player underscore player, since this already represents us. <coughs> and then I'll say find first child. All right, find the first child. So keep in mind these folders are parents. When there's a drop down, these are all child. Find first child. And I'm going to tell it to look for data folder. All right, so when the game starts, it's going to look into my player folder. You saw those folders that was in my player. And it's going to look for one called data folder. Now, an if condition to check to see if it doesn't exist. So if not, underscore folder. If it doesn't exist, then what happens next is we're going to create it. So we're going to say underscore folder equals instant dot new. Then this is where we give it a name. Um, a type, I'm sorry, it's a type of folder we're about to make using the code. The code is going to make this folder. That's one step. The next step is now the folder name. Underscore folder dot name, I believe it's a capital N, is equal to, and I want it to be this name. Because remember, I'm checking to see if this folder already exists as a child object of the player. If it doesn't, I'm creating it so that the next time I check, it's already there. It, it does exist. Finally, after creating this folder, giving it a name, I want to parent it. Parent 
equal to the player. So watch this. When we hit play, player shows up. And I said, in the player, the child object, is there a folder called data uh, folder? There wasn't. But now there is, because I've told the code that if there wasn't, create one. And now there is one. In there, we're going to put his currency that belongs to him. All right, so let's do that next. And we'll go a little faster this time because you guys kind of understand what's going on. First, local. Um, I'm going to call this uh, player money equal. And again, how do we create it? Instant new. What type of thing is it? We have a few here to choose from. It's going to be int value because this is not going to be a folder. This is going to be a, a value, right? Now that we created that player money, we're going to say player money. And just like we did here, these two things, that's basically what we're going to do, but a little bit different. So player money dot name. What is the name that we're going to give this, um, this, this currency? I'm going to call it, uh, let's call it cash. Okay, we're just going to call it cash. Next, player money dot value. How much value we're going to give it. So the name is not the value. And this is where we had set our start money, which represents 500. So now I put that there. And guys, you know very well, you could have just easily put the number 500 here. But the reason I do it up top is because anytime your code gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and you just kind of want to change the amount that they start with, you can just come up here and find it. So this variable is not like super necessar necessary, but it's convenient. Finally, to wrap this video up, player dot parent, and we're going to parent it to what? What do you think, Mr. Cruz? We are we going to parent it to the to the player? To the player? No, to the folder, actually. Because again, we want to put the cash value into the folder, and the folder is parented to the player. Uh, okay. So the so, folder is parented to the player, but now you're referencing the folder, but the folder is already inside the player. Yes, this folder will be created first. Keep in mind, guys, the, the script will read from the, the top and down so it's going to create the folder and create this this value that's called cache and put it in that folder let's check it out game play and while the game is playing we go over here to the folder there's our player in the player there's a folder that we created with our code in that code there's a value we created, we created called cache and then <coughs> you see the value of that cache is set to 500 um, right there now we don't see yes. it here, and as we wrap up this video, we don't see it here. I'm going to show you a little trick. Don't All forget right. to stop the game. Yes, don't forget to stop the game. Awesome. Thank you, Mr. Cruz. No problem. The little trick with this is that Roblox Studio, or Roblox, um, has certain special folder names that you can use to make certain things happen. So. Here's where I'm naming the folder. I'm going to change it instead of data folder to leader, lowercase letters, and then stats ends with an S, leader stats. Now, the logic here wouldn't make sense if I am trying to check to see if there's a folder name data folder, but then when I create one, I name it leader folder. So I also need to change this to say leader stats. So I'm going to check to see if there's a leader stats folder in the player. If not, create one. And then if so, create the cache, put the cache in there. Now what happens is just by naming it leader stats, check this out. It shows up here. And it says cache and the amount. Simply yeah. by naming it leader stats. So um, it's important to know little things like that. But that was it for today. Don't want to keep you. 
thank you so much hopefully that was about 10 or <laughs> too much explanation could make the video longer but hopefully it was easy to understand and you get it we check this folder right here where all the players will go and you know the only player you need to care about um because this script will run on everyone's computer and so they become their local player so you just care about yourself local player when there's more players in there there's a, there'll be more and then we create a leader stats folder in that leader stats folder we create the value called cache because that value is there it shows up here as i am in this folder in the cache right here if i was to change this value to 9000 press enter you can see it updates right there as well with that guys thank you so much for checking this video out subscribe so that you'll be notified with the next video uh every week on wednesdays it's wednesday right oh uh, yes thank you cruz i am so tired Every week on Wednesday, we're going to be doing this series until we've completely made a tycoon, a fully functioning tycoon game. And then so you can probably play it on Roblox. And it will be, yeah, it'll be Roblox released by Cruise probably, so watch out for it. Um, so if you're interested, keep watching and subscribe so you get the notification. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.